Good morning. We're here at the State Emergency Operations Center. I'm joined with Ke by Kevin Guthrie, Florida Division of Emergency Management, Secretary Jared Perdue, Florida Department of Transportation, Major General John Haas from the Florida National Guard. Uh, Hurricane Milton, when we were here yesterday morning, said this is a tropical storm, might become a hurricane yesterday, but probably by today, and it became a hurricane very quickly. And so not only is it a hurricane, uh, it's already a major hurricane, and it's now a Category 4 hurricane with maximum sustained winds at 150 miles per hour. It is expected to make landfall on the west coast of Florida uh, sometime between Wednesday evening or perhaps even very early on Thursday. This has gone slower than the projections were in terms of the, uh, how it's moving towards Florida. And if that continues, it's going to push back when landfall will happen. Of course, you can see impacts prior to the eyewall making landfall. We have made a pre-landfall declaration request to FEMA for support, and Kevin has been working with the administrator, and we anticipate positive approval on that. We have 51 counties in Florida currently under a state of emergency. The executive order that I signed over the weekend uh, also orders all disaster debris management sites and landfills to be open 24-7 in the uh, lead up to Hurricane Milton. We had a lot of debris left from Hurricane Helene on Florida's Gulf Coast. Uh, that creates a huge hazard uh, if you have a major hurricane hit in that area uh, this week. So we've marshaled state assets to be able to help with that mission, and uh, we're going to continue to do that until it's uh, safe, uh, until it's no longer safe to do so. So we do have a Category 4 hurricane. Uh, it is currently located 745 miles west, southwest of Tampa. Uh, it has not moved terribly quickly, but that obviously could change going forward. Storm surge watch has been issued for the Florida Gulf Coast from mainland Monroe County northward to the Suwannee River, the dixie Levy County line. Uh, 8 to 12 feet peak storm surge is potential for northern Pinellas all the way down to Charlotte, including in Tampa Bay. 5 to 10 feet peak sur uh, storm surge is possible from Yankeetown southward to the Pasco-Pinellas County line and from Englewood southward to Bonita Beach, including Charlotte Harbor. Hurricane watches have been issued for portions of West Central Florida and Florida's Nature Coast. Tropical storm watches extend further south and north through southwest Florida and the Keys uh, and along portions of the Florida Panhandle. Division of Emergency Management is busy facilitating hundreds of resource requests from communities as we prepare for the impacts. Uh, we've already set, uh, sent major truckloads of food and water to Central Florida in preparation for points of distribution sites after the storm. We're also coordinating the deployment of more than 2,000 feet of flood protection systems uh, and prioritizing critical infrastructure like hospitals, wastewater treatment facilities, and electrical infrastructure. We've deployed a flood barrier around a water pumping station in Bradenton, a fire station in Hillsborough, and more en route uh, to the, the courthouse in Charlotte County, hospital in Kissimmee, master pump station in St. Pete, and a community resource center in Hernando County. We've also deployed generators uh, to support special needs sheltering operations. Uh, and of course, Starlink Internet, uh, all counties uh, have access to that, and we're deploying more as needed. More than 200 ambulances and more than 30 paratransits are in Central Florida footprint, ready to support first responder operations. And as I previously noted, we've ramped up our support of debris removal. That's a 24-7 round-the-clock mission. The state of Florida is amassing significant amount of fuel reserves ahead of Milton, and we're staging it to be utilized as needed. These quantities include 415,000 gallons of diesel, 389,000 gallons of gasoline, and an additional 1.5 million gallons of both diesel and gasoline are currently en route. I know there's different things that are being said, but all fuel continues to arrive at Florida ports. There has not been an interruption of that. I know people are going to fill up their gas tanks, which is a good thing. Uh, there's more lines than, than maybe th that we're used to on some of these, uh, but there has not been an interruption in fuel deliveries, uh, and all the ports um, are checked in on that. Local officials and their vendors must continue debris removal efforts 
for those areas that are in the eye, a potential path of this storm. My executive order requires debril, debris landfill and dump sites to remain open 24 seven to accept debris from Hurricane Helene. We need as much of this debris picked up as possible. Uh, this creates a, a safety hazard and it also will increase the damage that Milton could do uh, with flying debris. And all local entities should comply with this order and work around the clock to accomplish this mission. We have uh, deployed major assets to help, but yet you know, last night in Pinellas County, there were 300 vehicles. Some of them were state vehicles, but also a lot of private uh, pickup trucks and vehicles who were bringing debris as they, that's helpful. They should be doing that. Uh, and yet uh, the, one of the gates was locked. There was no one manning it. And so we had this massive line of cars waiting to drop off debris, which is, which is a good thing. And so Florida Highway Patrol basically took matters into their own hands, uh, fastened some, some rope to a couple pickup trucks to the gate and busted the gate open. And then those, those uh, trucks were able to go in and, and unload the debris. We don't have time for bureaucracy and red tape. Uh, we have to get the job done. And the effort that Jared Perdue and Kevin's team have made in helping uh, get the debris off and supplementing the, the local efforts has been incredible. We have noticed uh, since the weekend in the order, you have seen some more vendors out there. I know city of St. Petersburg has been working hard to get the debris out and that's a great thing. And they're working, I think, uh, well, uh, but these debris sites need to be open and we're gonna ensure that to be able to do. So just in the last 24 hours, uh, the state has done almost 500 truckloads of debris totaling 9,000 cubic yards. So that's just from the barrier islands in Pinellas County bringing to the debris landfills. Uh, we have over 200 state assets, dump trucks, other types of trucks and vehicles to be able to do. But keeping it 24 seven is important. We absolutely encourage private citizens to have the debris and, and bring it in. That's helping the mission. Can't get bogged down in bureaucracy on this. The debris mission is gonna continue uh, until it's no longer safe to do so. Clearly, we're gonna be able to work all the way through today uh, and probably all the way through tomorrow, given that the storm's likely not to uh, make landfall till later on Wednesday, and that could even get pushed back even further. So we've made a big dent in this. Uh, I know folks on the ground locally in those barrier islands and places like Manatee and Pinellas have been working very hard but, but let's get this done. Let's get as much of that debris removed as humanly possible, and let's work 24 seven to be able to do it. Uh, so we have right now, just in the debris mission, we have 800 National Guardsmen that are also deployed helping our state agencies. We currently have 5,000 Guardsmen that are mobilized for the response to this storm, and we have more than 3,000 additional Guardsmen who will be mobilized prior to landfall. The National Guard's also deploying heavy equipment to assist with debris removal, including Army and Air Force horizontal construction units, tactical high water vehicles, dump trucks, and front end loaders. Linemen and power re restoration uh, resources are being marshaled in advance of the storm. This is a storm, the path of this storm that would hit the western part of the Florida Peninsula, then go all the way across the peninsula and exit in the Atlantic Ocean, that's gonna impact a lot of different utilities. Uh, we've spoken to, to, to most of them and, and they're, they're working to get, to get people here. You know, if you look, uh, we had Helene and there were 2.4 million restorations, but 99.9% .9 were back within a few days. You know, there's still hundreds of thousands of people without power in some of these other states that got hit by Helene. So there are crews working there. Uh, but they're bringing people in from far and wide to be able to respond accordingly. This path of this storm, you know, we don't know exactly how it's gonna go. I know they say the eye is gonna go here or here. Uh, th th that can move when you're talking about 30, 40, 50 miles north or south, will make a huge difference in terms of who gets the worst surge, uh, how much power is, is ended up uh, uh, taken out. Uh, and so we have no way of knowing how that's gonna shake out. So the resources are being brought in and the power restoration effort will, will begin as soon as it's safe to do so. 
Again, I made this point yesterday, but all of our assets that we had lent to assist in North Carolina are here in the state of Florida. We have a temporary base camp at Tropicana Field to support uh, not just the debris operations, but any post landfall first responding operations. So we have landfall is going to happen probably sometime later Wednesday maybe early Thursday, and, and it could potentially speed up, and so maybe it'll be a little earlier than that. It could continue slowing. Maybe it'll be a little less, but, but there is going to be a landfall in the middle of this week. Uh, Monday mor morning, where we are today, you have time to execute your plan, but you got to do it now. Uh, there are going to be, there have been some evacuations that have been issued. There's going to be a flurry of them today. I know the counties are working on uh, opening shelters. They typically will open the shelters after they have the evacuation go out, not before. Uh, so make sure that you're following the, the, the news coming out of your local county. Uh, but all these barrier islands, all these areas that would be susceptible to this storm surge that's up and down the, the west coast of Florida, you should assume that there's going to be some form of evacuations that are going to be issued by your local uh, county uh, officials. That, that, is, that is going to happen when you have the potential for storm surge of this magnitude. We also have a storm that's already very powerful. Now, the forecasts are that it's going to peak before it reaches landfall and then weaken. It's still going to be a strong storm. But, you know, we don't know that that's necessarily going to happen. Uh, and so this is something that's going to be really, really significant one way or another. Uh, but you have time to be able uh, to do this today. And again, you don't have to evacuate uh, hundreds of miles. If you're in those barrier islands, if you're in areas that are susceptible to storm surge, you go to areas that are not susceptible to that. Every place, every county has places within them where you can go to. Uh, maybe it's a friend's house, maybe it's a hotel, uh, maybe it's a shelter. Uh, we have the ability to withstand wind in Florida with most of our buildings, and nothing would be designated as a shelter if it couldn't withstand that. Uh, so, so, so that's an option, especially if you're not comfortable getting on the road and traveling a great distance. You don't have to do that. And you're going to see shelters open in all these counties. Kevin is working on supplementing that uh, from the state uh, if there's a need to have more, particularly in central Florida. Uh, so we'll do that. But you have an opportunity uh, today. To, to, do, to do what you need to do to execute this plan. You have time today, uh, but do it. But time is going to start running out very, very soon. We are uh, effective at 1030 a.m. We are suspending all tolls in uh, west, uh, western part of, of central Florida into central Florida as well as Alligator Alley. You know, people sometimes will say, you know, where do you evacuate to? They just want to get out. They, they don't want to just stay local and they want to get out. Um, well, I think that uh, probably the easiest route would probably be to go to go north if you're in central Florida because the way the storm looks, it looks like it's going to have more of an impact on se central and southern Florida. Uh, most of these places in Tallahassee and northern Florida likely aren't going to see as significant of impacts. Uh, but, but be that as it may, just understand that if they have a storm going into the greater Tampa Bay area now, it is possible that that could shift further south. So if you do evacuate south, you may be ending up going to where you're going to have a lot of the storm anyways. We saw that with Hurricane Ian, so just be mindful of that. But again, you don't have to uh, go hundreds of miles. That is not required. Uh, any place that's going to be open as a shelter, Florida hotels that, that, are, that are built you know, within the last however many 20, 30 years are all going to be able uh, to withstand hurricane force winds. Sandbag locations are open in multiple counties in South and Central Florida. Check your county's EM page to find out where those locations are. You can find your county's emergency management page by going to floridadisaster.org backslash counties. floridadisaster.org backslash counties. And you have that local EM page that will tell you about any local evacuation orders that are made. But know your zone, know where you are. You know, the bad thing about having a storm right on top is we have these logistical challenges. The one thing people have with Helene, they know if they got a lot of storm surge with Helene, very well may get a, even more with this storm. Uh, so don't mess with the storm surge and do what you need to do to, to keep yourself and your family safe.
Uh, we're going to be continuing to, to, to work around the clock here at the Emergency Operations Center. Uh, we, we're doing all the things that, that we would normally do, but then obviously we have this debris removal mission that we've, uh, uh, that we've dived into to be able to help these local communities that, that have all this. Uh, it's going well, but, but we, need, uh, we need to keep doing on that. Okay, Kevin Guthrie will come up and give an update. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for uh, once again supporting the division, the state emergency response team as we respond to Hurricane Milton. The state emergency response team continues to work on more than 600 mission requests received from our counties. Residents should begin finalizing your disaster plans, and if your plan calls for you to evacuate, you should do so today. Many of the counties are going to issue their evacuation orders today. Some of them, for example, Pasco County, will start at 10 a.m. this morning. Others will be Pinellas County, I believe at 2 p.m. this afternoon, and still others will have varying times. You may ask why the varying times. Each county's population is factored into that, so the clearance times is what they will be making those decisions based on. So those evacuation orders will be going out today. I would highly recommend if anybody has the means to do so, you have the capability of going to a hotel, staying with friends and families, get on the road today, wherever that might be. There's hoteling in Orlando. If you are 100% going to need to be dependent on power and you have the means to do so, you may want to consider a Jacksonville. It's likely that Jacksonville will not experience any type of power outage. So if you've got to be guaranteed power and you have the financial means, you may want to consider something a little bit further away. However, for those that do not, Shelters will be opening. We recommend that you start moving towards a shelter. Shelter capacity will be limited. You heard the governor say that we are going to work on supplemental sheltering. We have identified state buildings. We have identified um, vacant buildings across the entire footprint of Florida that we'll, we will be opening up additional shelters when school buildings and other shelters, traditional shelters, start to reach their capacity. Many of you may need to resupply your disaster supply kit. Again, that is a today thing. You need to be doing that today. If you get to a shelter, there will be food and water there. It will not be, it will not be sit down eating. It will be shelf stable meals. It will be more of the type of material or food that you're used to seeing at a point of distribution, but we will have food and water. If you have access for functional needs, and have not registered with the Florida Special Needs Registry, you need to do that this morning. They've already started, cities and counties have already started call downs of their special needs registry to ensure that those individuals have a ride to the closest special needs shelter. If you depend on medication or electricity to use your medical devices, your area is called to evacuate, you need to do so. You may lose power and there will be no way to use your medical devices. Make sure that's a part of your plan. The National Hurricane Center released new storm surge values as of 8 a.m. this morning. They issued a special advisor at 9 that the governor's already talked about where uh, the hurricane force winds are now category 4. However, I'm going to draw your attention to something we did to you or did for you this morning. Everybody likes visuals. 5 feet and 10 feet. The ceiling in here is 10 foot 8. We're talking about storm surge values higher than the ceiling. Please, if you're in the Tampa Bay area, you need to evacuate. If they have called for your evacuation order, I beg you, I implore you to evacuate. Drowning deaths due to storm surge are 100% preventable if you leave. We had situations where people died of drowning in Hurricane Ian. Had they just gone across the bridge from Estero Bay, Sanibel Island, and so on, just across the bridge to the first available shelter that had capacity, they'd still be alive today. Please remember that counties will call for these evacuation orders and we will likely be seeing those today as I've already mentioned. If you need to evacuate, we want you to evacuate out, not up. After I made the comment last night, my brother-in-law called me and said, in fact, for Hurricane Helene, we have 380 elevators that are not working in the greater Tampa Bay area. Elevators are gonna go down. You're not going to be able to get down the elevators. If you are dependent on elevator usage versus stairs, you need to make that a part of your evacuation plan. 
If you cannot get down those stairs, you need to evacuate. Evacuate out, not up. You can visit floridadisaster.org slash no to determine if you live in an evacuation zone. Your gas tank and electric vehicle only need to be halfway full. Get the gas, get as much as you need to get to where you're going. If you're, evacuate, if you're in an evacuation zone, you need evacuation assistance, please call this number, 1-800-729-3413. That's 1-800-729-3413. That's for all residents. We have people there to answer your questions and we can help you get out of your evacuation zone if you need additional assistance. The state has been activated, the state has activated the state assistance information line, also known as the sale line. If you need information, again, information only on resources. They cannot get you people, but if you need to ask a question, that is what the sale line is for. 1-800-342-3557. Again, that's 1-800-342-3557. We have English, Spanish, and Haitian Creole waiting to help you out. Additional preparedness resources can be found at floridadisaster.org slash update. Make sure you follow us on X, Instagram, at FLSERT and on Facebook at FDEM as we are sharing updates in real time. Please make sure that you have a way to receive alerts. Make sure that you uh, see all the additional information at your county emergency management agency at floridadisaster.org slash counties. And again, thank you, Governor, for your continued support and partnership. Thank you, Jared. All right, thank you, Governor, and, and good morning. Uh, we have continued to respond to Hurricane Helene and also ramped up our efforts to prepare for Hurricane Milton. Um, to date, FDOT has removed nearly 180,000 cubic yards of debris statewide, and as you heard from Governor DeSantis, we've taken the mission of removing as much as debris as possible before Milton makes landfall very serious. We've mobilized every available state asset and resource to do just this. It's been a partnership between FDOT, DEM, Florida Department of Agriculture, the National Guard, and the State Guard. Um, we have a lot of people on the ground. We have a lot of equipment on the ground. We have continued to remove debris. It is really important that everybody understand we're in this thing together. As you heard from the governor, we saw a lot of private property owners bringing debris to landfills throughout the night last night. We highly encourage that. Every little bit of debris that gets removed counts and gets us to our goal and helps us fulfill that mission. We are calling on all of our local governments, local municipalities, and debris vendors and contractors. If you have available resources and available assets, please deploy those. Join us, join state employees in our asset deployment of all of our equipment to remove debris in Pinellas, Manatee specifically, where they were hit hard by Helene. This is a very important mission. We're all in this together. We need everybody to mobilize their resources and assets. As you've heard from the governor, um, throughout the day yesterday, we moved a lot of debris. We're gonna continue working until it's no longer safe to do so. And our goal, again, is to remove as much debris as we can possibly remove before Hurricane Milton makes landfall. Um, as you heard from the governor, we are preparing to suspend tolls effective at 10.30 a.m. this morning for West Florida, Central Florida, and Alligator Alley to help facilitate those evacuations. We have seen people begin to leave already, which is a good thing. Uh, you need to leave early. If you're within those low-lying areas where storm surge could impact you, the earlier you leave, the better. It's going to help with traffic. It's going to help with evacuations, and it will make your trip a lot easier. We've seen increased volumes on I-75 and I-4. We're continuing to watch traffic live with our 10 regional traffic management centers across the state. They operate 24-7. We've increased the number and frequency of our Road Ranger Service Patrol and Motorist Aid to facilitate those evacuations. They do have the ability to aid motorists with fuel, water, and also remove stranded or idle vehicles out of the travel way. Um, we've also prepared our shoulders for what we call emergency shoulder use. Um, as volumes pick up and speeds lower for um, the interstate facilities, we then begin to implement what's known as emergency shoulder use, and we open up the shoulders of our interstates for live traffic. Um, we do that when the speeds get down to around 40 miles per hour. Um, we have a partnership with Florida Highway Patrol, and they go out there, the troopers go out there live, real time, and assist people in getting on the shoulder to help relieve congestion. We've used this in multiple storms. 
We used it for Hurricane Irma. We used it for Hurricane Ian. It was very successful. And so we're prepared and ready to do that as volumes continue to pick up. Um, a lot of rain has already fallen across the state of Florida. The ground is saturated. More rain is anticipated to fall before Hurricane Milton makes landfall. So in terms of transportation, we are anticipating a vegetative debris event. We're ramping up our resources for cut and toss and clearing roads. We're preparing all of our drainage structures and drainage systems, cleaning those out. We encourage all of our local governments, our counties, local municipalities to do the same thing so that we can get roads back open as quickly as possible. We're watching very closely our bridges and low-lying roads in coastal areas and also our bridges and low-lying roads around rivers, creeks, and streams inland with the amount of rainfall that's coming in. And we're going to be prepared to deploy damage assessment teams and affect emergency temporary repairs immediately after the storm passes through based on what we see and find. We've, we're staging generators for traffic signal power. We're staging pumps for potential flooding. And we're going to be ready, ready to roll and ready to respond as soon as Hurricane Milton passes through. Um, we're committing every possible and available resource to respond to this storm. We've had over 2,000 FDOT employees actively responding to Hurricane Helene. They're going to continue working through Hurricane Milton. We are, we are committed to getting the job done, and we're going to make sure it happens. Um, if you need information on traffic, fl511.com is the place to get traffic information. It is updated live, real time, by our traffic management centers. A lot of times um, during emergency preparedness and response, the third party navigation apps sometimes don't have all the accurate information. FL511.com is the place to get traffic information. Thank you, Governor. Okay, so we're um, you know, ramping up, but we've been ramping up all, all weekend. We've got a massive amount of resources that are uh, have been mobilized and are continue to be mobilized, including this debris mission, which we're, uh, uh, we think is critical. But also just say this is a storm. When these hurricanes make a landfall, they obviously will weaken some. But it's uh, projected to leave the Florida Peninsula on the east coast of Florida still as a hurricane. Uh, so it didn't like this is going to be something where it hits as a hurricane and ends up more of just a tropical system by the time it leaves the state. Uh, it's going to remain a hurricane at some level uh, all the way through exiting on the east coast of Florida. And again, we don't have a, a guaranteed track in terms of where this thing's going to make landfall. You're talking about 50 miles north, 50 miles south. That'll make a huge difference in terms of where you have the most significant impacts. And there's just no way to know right now where exactly that's going to be. And so that's why anybody on the west coast of Florida, uh, you have the potential for, for, for major storm surge. And then if you are in the path of this on the interior part of Florida, you, you're going to get some strong winds. Uh, it isn't like it's just going to be um, a rainstorm. I mean, all the way until it exits the state, it's going to be powerful. So, so please uh, take, take the appropriate precautions, uh, listen to your local officials, and um, you know, we'll get through this. Uh, we'll respond very quickly, uh, but, but this does have the potential to have a lot of damage. Okay? Governor, are you still anticipating this to be the largest evacuation since Irma in like 2017? It's hard to know exactly. I mean, I think Irma, there was a lot of people that got on the road, and then they had to go back and this. And so there was, it, it was a little, little bit different, I think, situation here. Here we know that if you are in a, an area on the Florida Peninsula on the west coast of the state that is vulnerable to storm surge, you're likely going to be under uh, some type of an evacuation order. Uh, certainly anywhere in that center part of the state, uh, west central Florida, as you get down to, to Bradenton, Sarasota, Charlotte, uh, Pasco, all those areas uh, are going to have evacuation orders uh, for, for, for sure. Uh, so, so it is going to be a significant number of people. Uh, we'll see exactly how, how that shakes out. But, but it's a major issue because of we have a storm that could, could hit in different spots. I mean, that's just the reality that we're dealing with. I mean, if we knew exactly where it was going to hit, you probably would evacuate fewer people. But we don't know that. Uh, and as we saw with Hurricane Ian, there was a thought a couple days before it was going to hit one place. It ended up hitting much further south. Uh, so in this storm, even though a lot of the models track it somewhere in that in that Sarasota, Bradenton, Tampa Bay area right now, and, and maybe that's what ends up happening, you know, it potentially could hit further north. It potentially could hit further south. So just knowing that and knowing the range of storm surge that you're dealing with, you're going to see a lot of evacuation orders. 
particular county um, with Helene. The sheriff says it was because everyone evacuated those communities were level. Talk about the importance of people listening to, to those evacuation orders with this one. Well, Taylor County had more storm surge and even is being predicted for this storm at, at this point. I mean, you know, you had 15, maybe even 20 feet in some of those areas. So you had homes that withstood Hurricane Idalia, which was category hit, hit as a category three. It was a four in the water and then it hit as a three and survived it fine. And then on, on Helene, they were totally wiped off the map. And that's all because of the storm surge. It is um, the winds were, were, were more with Helene than with Idalia, but not so much more that a house could go fine and then get obliterated. It was the storm surge. And when you get away from the storm surge, then you're going to be able to most likely ride out the storm and be safe. You hide from the wind and you run from the water. You can find structures in Florida that can withstand, even if you're in the path of the storm, that can withstand the wind. There's a lot of things in Florida that are built to be able to, to withstand major hurricane force winds, but you just can't contend with storm surge that is 10, 15 feet of storm surge. I mean, Kevin showed, I mean, this is 10, a little bit over 10 feet, this, uh, th th this room. Uh, so that's a significant thing, and you're just not going to be able to beat Mother Nature. So I think the reason why they had no fatalities is because the people that were in those areas that got whacked by the storm surge did get out. Now, we always have, and, and in Helene, we had storm fatalities attributed to the storm from, you know, a tree can fall somewhere, you can have a traffic accident, you can have all that. That's just more likely to happen in more populated areas, and, and it's very unfortunate. And so some of those things uh, can, can kind of just be freak occurrences with that. But the one thing that people can control is if you are in an area uh, that is vulnerable to this surge, if you get out of there, uh, the chance of you being able to, to ride this out and returning home safely uh, is, is very, very high. Uh, if you stay in there and you got 10 feet, um, you know, you're really, really taking a risk with your, with your, with your life and your safety. What are we going to do about this? There's a good picture of a, you know, whole field of bucket trucks and line crews ready to go to put power up. We don't have that right now. And it sounds like you said the local, the private. No, no, they're, they're being mobilized now. I mean, you know, you think. How many do we have pulled together so far? Well, they're, they're working with the companies, but you know, we've been talking with them over the weekend. Uh, they understand. And so if you look at the path of the storm, you know, Tampa Bay, you got Tico, you got a lot of Duke, and then to the extent it goes south of Tampa Bay, across you pretty much have FPL. Um, and so, you know, these are, these are major engines. We do have some municipals, we do have some co-ops as well, but you know, they did a lot with, with this. Uh, so, so that is happening. They are actively working to bring as many people in as possible. Uh, you're looking at probably not gonna be able to do any restoration until Thursday morning would, would likely be as early as you're going to be able to do it, depending on, and it may even be later if the storm continues to, to, to move slower than anticipated. But, but they are all actively bringing people in, uh, and I think you're going to continue to see more and more people brought into the state um, over, the next, uh, over the next few days. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like they have a line workers in from the western, western United States because there's so much committed to the Carolinas after Helene. Is there a problem with just finding enough mine workers now to, to come in and do that work? Well, they are, they are bringing people from further away from Florida than traditionally because we still have hundreds of thousands of people without power in other parts of the country, other parts of the southeast. So you do have a lot of people that are working in those areas. That's just the reality. I mean, they're not going to likely bring in uh, take someone off a, off a job that's there uh, and bring them back until that job is, is finished. Uh, but I do know, and I spoke with FPL uh, personally, uh, you know, they're committed to bringing people in from where they need to to, to be able to get the job done. But, but obviously it's, uh, it's more challenging to do that when you just had a hurricane that knocked out power for, I mean, you still have hundreds of thousands of folks in, I think, the, the Carolinas and Georgia, but certainly North Carolina, that, that don't have power. Uh, Florida, we, we had a very rapid restoration, but that, that was not, I think, uh, replicated in those states, and so you got a lot of people there. But um, if you gotta bring them in from Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, all those places, they're gonna do it. 
obviously we support the mutual aid from the emergency management perspective and we'll continue to provide support for mutual aid. Pretty much all of our outfits at this point uh, welcome the mutual aid. That wasn't true a few years ago. Now I think it is and I think that there's a better posture overall for that. But um, you had a lot of power outages throughout the southeastern United States. That wasn't even two weeks ago. I mean, this hit um, Thursday, uh, two weeks ago. I mean, so this is um, – that, that is ongoing. And, and honestly, I think people, you know, been through these storms recently in Florida. Uh, the norm is that people are without power for, for, for three weeks, a month, five weeks. I mean, that's the norm in these hurricanes. I think our efforts to really uh, front load this and go quickly and working with the utilities – has, has, that's not the norm in terms of how these things are going. So the fact that you still have people there is not surprising to me at all. Uh, but I'm glad that the mission here was completed in record time. I know that's going to be helpful for those. And if we had had, if we hadn't have pre-staged before Helene, you could be in a situation where you're having, you know, massive re uh, restoration efforts still ongoing in the state of Florida just for Helene. So fortunately, that is 99.9% .9 of that was complete. And, uh, and, and we're ready for the next one. Lex, you're anticipating on elections, given that today's the last day to register to vote or anything like that? No, not in terms of voter registration. I mean, people can register today, and then th that's that. There's nothing inhibiting you registering today. The storm has not hit yet. Now, after the storm, uh, we will see what damage is there. And if I have to do a similar executive order that I did in Ian and that I did for Helene, uh, we're, we're happy to do it, but we're not going to change any um, – registration deadline you can register today and and there doesn't need to there's no reason to open that up one of the things that uh, happened in uh, hurricane irma was uh the governor scott at the time closed all public schools to have them open as, as shelters now I, I don't know if you need to do all of them but you anticipate closing schools in areas that may not be affected just to have them open as so what we are going to and kevin can talk a little bit more about that we already have places that are outside the path of the storm that have volunteered to provide sheltering. Some of that may be schools, some of that may be other things. And so you could see in the panhandle, for example, you, you could see options for people that'll do. I think, and Kevin, do you want to address that? I mean, I think, Kevin, so you're going to see schools closure in the path of the storm for sure. Uh, and that's going to happen all through central Florida and potentially southern Florida, depending on the exact path. So all of those shelter operations will be going on, on on the county level. And the thing about if you're in the Tampa Bay, Bradenton, Sarasota, wherever this thing is likely going to hit, hit um, uh, make landfall, uh, you will have options within your county. You are not going to need to go. You can hunker down. But the further inland you go, there would probably be less demand for sheltering from the residents of places like Orange or Seminole just simply because – if they're not in a flood zone or they're not a, a danger for, for rising waters, likely they live in homes that are going to be able to ride this out. Like, and if you're a mobile home park or something, that may be different. So I, I would anticipate there being more of a demand for sheltering uh, on the coast. And then with Kevin's mission of you know, if there's an abandoned J.C. Penney, they're going to go in, they're going to make give that an option, and that'll be local so that people don't have to drive. Uh, very hard. So, so they've been. This is a contingency that they've had planned for a long time. So they've been working this for for many days. As soon as we saw that there was likely going to be a a storm, so there'll be a lot of different options. But if there does need to be uh, sheltering in other areas outside, I know there's already been been uh, counties that have uh, raised their hand and say they want to do that. Miles and miles of debris along the side of the road in Pinellas County. Um, how would you describe the potential danger if you're not able to get a lot of that out, out of the way before the So storm? the debris in Pinellas, well, I can tell you the danger is less than it would have been had we not mobilized all these state assets. Uh, we saw this as something. And, in fact, you know, Kevin and, and I have been saying we want to be helpful with debris in ways that we can be. Obviously, this is a local responsibility to pick up the stuff on the roads. Uh, and, and Kevin and I both really urged all the local governments have those debris contracts ready. As soon as Helene passes, you got to go. And I think a lot of them did do that. Uh, but if you're looking at what we've done to have, what, what is it, eight or 9,000 cubic, um, uh, I mean, just 
cubic yards of, of debris that just our trucks have done, I mean, that's made a huge difference. And in fact, you know, there's videos about uh, all these dump trucks just moving through the Pinellas beaches, carrying all this stuff. They have escorts and all this. And so this was something that we recognized as a danger that could exacerbate the impacts uh, of the storm. And think about it. If this storm bends, say, you know, 60 miles south of the Tampa Bay area, uh, you know, that will do less damage than if it goes directly or a little north, just based on these storms would do, but it still can, it still can do damage. But just think about if, if there's additional damage from flying debris, you could end up having way worse damage than, than you otherwise would have because of that. So that's why we did it. That's why when we did the executive order, we said 24 seven debris pickup and being able to have these landfills be open. We did the executive order uh, on Saturday, and what happened over the night? It was closed. So what did we do? We cut the locks and we let people bring the debris. Overnight yesterday, what did we have? We had hundreds of cars, not just state vehicles, not just private contractors, we had private citizens loading up their F-250s with debris to bring it. That's helping, that's a public service for them to do that and the gate was closed and there was no one manning it. So we opened it um, and got it going. So, so the debris is something that 24 seven, we need all hands on deck. We've made a huge dent in the debris, but there's a lot of it and particularly Pinellas, Manatee, Barrier Islands, uh, it is a hazard. And so that's why we need to go all day, all through the night, tomorrow as long as as possible i think you're probably going to be able to go all day on tuesday uh given that the storm's likely not gonna uh, get here uh in full till wednesday evening and, and may, maybe it'll continue to slow who knows um but as long as it's safe to do so we need to be doing that and um and this is a hazard so i i appreciate we have had like the city of st petersburg they had their contractors out there doing stuff there's a lot, a lot of private citizens have been working really hard on it but no bureaucracy no more red tape no more excuses about this debris we've got to get it off and we got to work to do it i'm confident that uh, we have already mitigated some of the damage because of of all the stuff that we've done i mean we have over just from the state over 200 uh, trucks that are there hauling away debris and they're doing that round the clock. Now, we're also uh, gonna be in a situation where we probably have more uh, personnel than we do vehicles. And so one of the things they're doing, we got guardsmen with these things you can just roll down the sidewalk and they're, they're throwing in debris um, into that. So we're being very creative with it, but let's have all governments, local and county um, on the west, west coast of Florida, get into this debris removal right now if you haven't done it full tilt and let's run this all the way through to mitigate damage. Do we have another the debris yeah. removal, um, uh, if the state, Director Guthrie's mentioned the state was monitoring this for about two weeks, the possibility of Milton, um, why deploy those forces to North Carolina to Tennessee instead of starting that debris removal earlier? Because when we have storms, people uh, help the state of Florida and you had people that were dying in the mountains there and we're all Americans and we step up and we do the right thing. Uh, none of the resources we did are debris removal. This is search and rescue. These are Chinook helicopters. These are things that have nothing to do uh, with picking up debris. And oh, by the way, the debris, uh, and we stressed this from before Helene, the debris is a local responsibility. Uh, that's why we apply when we do the, the, the declarations and we try to get FEMA assistance. A big part of that FEMA assistance is reimbursing for the debris removal uh, for the local governments. That was true with Michael, that was true with Hurricane Ian. Um, so there, there's not a relation between um, removing debris and conducting search and rescue, but we've had a lot of support over the years from, um, from other states. Uh, I'm sure there's states that are, that are probably sending some help our way now in anticipation of, um, of Milton. And I haven't gotten a brief on that, but I'm, I'm almost positive that that's happening. And that's just what we do. When we've sent people to California, we've sent people to the heartland, we've sent people around the country just since I've been governor, uh, you had a, a humanitarian disaster there. Fortunately, our search and rescues were very efficient. Uh, we had no demand for it. 
and uh, our guys save lives there. Uh, we have helped Floridians who were still there, but we helped a lot of North Carolinians uh, who needed help and in some respects had been abandoned. So that was a successful mission. That was something that really made a difference. And um, I can tell you that all those assets are ready to go. Should we need that in the state of Florida? And hopefully, hopefully we don't need a lot of rescues, but they will be ready to go if they need it. Follow up to that. Do you worry that our resources being out there will kind of hinder? Pressure? There's no resources up there. Resources There's no our resources up there at all. None. So, you know, you can't do a search and rescue before the storm hits, right? So, so all those search and rescue folks, all the stuff, it's all back in the state of Florida. There has no impact on being able to respond to this in any way, shape, or form. Um, I get, you know, some people uh, see how it quite frankly, did not make the federal government look well to have Florida out there rescuing people before they had boots on the ground. Uh, and so I know it's kind of like a political thing for some. They want to try to act like we shouldn't have been helping. Uh, no, we did the right thing. We saved lives. Uh, we're happy to have done that, and we helped a really serious disaster. However, there's nobody there that, that um, you know, people have been redeployed. And in, honest, in, in reality, they would have been deactivated after Helene uh, when the recovery efforts, search and rescue efforts were done anyways. Uh, so in some respects, it's easier to just bring them back like we did than to have to remobilize because there is a period of time if you remobilize somebody um, who's not on active orders, it just takes a little longer. So, so everybody's there, everybody's loaded, everybody's ready to go. Um, and so any insinuation that somehow rescuing people and saving lives in North Carolina last week has any impact on what we're doing here now um, is 100% false. Do you feel that the state has enough debris removal contractors on hand to clean up, I guess, now both Helene and also Milton? Well, the, again, the debris removal is bottom up, okay? These are, these are city contracts. These are county contracts. You know, the state, you know, we will be helpful where, where we can be but it is not the state's primary responsibility on debris removal. That's why what we're doing with this unprecedented effort to marshal all of our state resources, that's to supplement what is being done locally. It is not to displace it. And we are not gonna be in a situation where the state of Florida is going to take over debris removal for the entire Florida peninsula. That is not going to work. That is not the way it's ever been done. Uh, so. We've been able to, to flex and, su and, and supplement. I mean, you're talking about assets and across, across a wide variety of agencies that this is not their primary mission, and yet they've been brought to bear to be able to get the debris uh, off the streets. Uh, but it is not going to be the state, when this is over, that you're relieved of your responsibility from a local government perspective to do debris. So we obviously have this mission now to clear from, the, from coastal uh, part of Tampa Bay and the Barrier Islands, uh, there will likely be a lot of debris from this storm. I mean, let's hope it's, it's as mild as possible, but this is a big one, and we're going to assume there's going to be a lot of debris. Uh, all those local governments, city, county, need to have debris contracts in place uh, and need to, need to activate those as soon as, um, as soon as the storm passes and get the debris up. And that's, just, that's not just true for the barrier islands. It's not just true for areas that may receive the landfall. You're going to have impacts that are going to be far more inland uh, than, uh, than certainly than Helene. I mean, Helene had relatively modest impacts inland because the storm was so far in the Gulf of Mexico that on the Florida Peninsula I'm talking about that you know, the winds just didn't extend far enough. You're going to have hurricane winds. Uh, potentially category three, but certainly one or two all the way through the Florida Peninsula. And so there's going to be debris. Uh, you're going to have a lot. I mean, Jared and his team, they're going to help clear the roads. They're going to do all that. But just in terms of private communities, in terms of county streets and all this in city streets, you're going to have debris. So, so they have got to do that. And um, I think our effort to supplement is something that we're happy to do. Uh, we think it's making a difference. It is requiring a lot of resources to be brought to bear, but I think it will likely mitigate some of the damage that was going to be done. But no more bureaucracy. We should not have to pry open any more landfills. Let's have this open 24-7 until it's no longer safe to do so. 
get as much debris off the off those streets as possible uh, so that we can mitigate damage from this upcoming storm. Have you had any sense and maybe you direct you of um, just hurricane fatigue from even just residents or workers, you know, anybody that uh, you know here we go again? Well, in terms of the state EOC and our and our agencies, you know, you know, we, we don't have time to, to be fatigued. I mean, it's not easy. Uh, you know, we had folks here thinking it may hit Tallahassee. They were overnight on the initial storm for Helene, and and there were crazy hours being worked. We've had a lot of it's a very swift response. People have been engaged on the guard, national guard, state guard, all these other things. So our view is that this is just what we have to deal with. I mean, we know that in the state of Florida. Uh, particularly once you get into September and the beginning of October, like you just have a higher frequency of having major hurricanes. That's historically been the truth, and we're very mindful of that. We saw the one thing brewing and, and a couple weeks ago, and then it was like, well, it may not be anything, and then they said maybe rainstorms. So we were monitoring that the whole time. We knew that this could be something, but there was reports that it was likely going to be something that would not rival Helene and then – uh, things change and so you just have to you just have to react to that and as soon as we saw that it was going to be more than just just rain and and, and a, and a mo modest tropical system we did the state of emergency we got everyone going now residents I think it's frustrating I think you go through and you see you get three feet four feet of water in your home you got a muck and gut you got to do all this stuff and I've seen really good efforts from the residents uh, going through Anna Maria, going through uh, Madeira, some of these places, compared to what they were four or five days before I was there to now, they have made a lot of progress. People have worked really hard, got a long way to go, but then to potentially have something hit again and cause even more damage, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it, it hurts morale. It's not, not easy to do. But we've had uh, Hurricane Helene hit in a place that had a major the year before, Anne had a had a had a minor hurricane uh, a month before, uh, and, and those folks uh, up there in the Big Ben, you know, they got they got hit multiple times. Uh, it's not easy. You just you just have to be resilient, and that's what they're doing. So on this one, I think that the negative is that it just has happened uh, right on the heels. We're cleaning up damage. There could be more damage, but people saw, hey, this was a hurricane that was a hundred miles. Off the, off the Florida Peninsula when you're looking at places like Manatee and Pinellas and some of these, and yet we had really significant storm surge. So now you have a, now it's a Category 4. So it's already, Milton is already uh, 10 miles per hour stronger than what Helene was at its peak. Now again, the meteorologists, they, they think it's going to weaken before it makes landfall, but you don't know that, and I think it's definitely going to strengthen more from the 150 uh, over the next 24 hours, uh, so we'll have to see. So, so I think the fact that they had just gone through that, probably people are like, I'm not messing with this. Uh, if I'm on one of those areas that can get whacked with the storm surge, uh, I'm going to retreat inland. Uh, I'm going to go somewhere else. Uh, I'm going to ride out the storm away from where we would have life-threatening surge and then go back and see. And remember, in my executive order on Saturday, we make it clear that residents, the default is, if a residents are told to evacuate and they do, when the storm passes, the default is they need to be able to get back to their homes as soon as possible. There are some extraordinary circumstances where it may not be safe, but we cannot just be keeping people out of their homes. I understand there's gonna be damage and you gotta work through these things, but if you don't let people back into their homes quickly, that is, that's gonna make them less likely to want to evacuate in the first place. And so we've, we've addressed that. Uh, and we'll make sure that we get you back into your homes as soon as, as soon as it's possible to do so, so so you have time to do that. So I, I think it's I think it's frustrating. I think people just wanted to be done with with hurricane season. You know, I always tell people I'm like, um, uh, there's just a sense that once you get to October, people think somehow the summer's over, and that you know we've got, and, and really the first two weeks of October historically have seen major storms. I was like, yeah, you kind of got to get to the end of October. It's not the end of season, obviously, but for majors, it's a lot less likely to happen. And so here we are. So we knew that this was a possibility. But I do think you're going to see a lot of people, when they're given the information of the potential surge, I do think they're going to make the decision uh, to, to, to leave uh, and then to come back when the storm passes.
uh, hotel policy for people with pets? Are they able to go to any hotel if it's an emergency, or do they still have to find pet-friendly uh, hotels? So the uh, and and Kevin can correct me, but uh, the Florida um, uh, Restaurant and Lodging Association has worked with the uh, hotels in Florida to when you have a Florida distress rate uh, to to allow the pets to come. So. There are distress rates. I saw Rosen Hotels had something out where, you know, relatively cheap for, for some of these. And, you know, Rosen's a good good outfit. They got nice rooms. I think it's like for a Florida resident fleeing hurricane zone, I think it's like 60 bucks or something like that. I mean, it's, it's, it's affordable. And then the pets. And so so that was not something we mandated, but it was something that the, the hotel and, and restaurant association uh, work with their members to, to accommodate that. And you do got to take your pets. I mean, do not leave a dog um, on a barrier island with potential 10 feet of storm surge. That's just not going to work. Uh, all counties have at least one pet friendly shelter, of course, the hotels. And then if you're staying with friends and family, I mean, our expectation would be that they would want to be able to uh, uh, to help the pets. And so so please do what you need to do to um, to, to protect your pets. Yes. Uh, there are, and this might be a, a better question for the secretary or the director, but there are some people, at least down in our station in Tampa, saying that they're having trouble uh, finding gas stations or that when they do get there, the long lines, people are waiting more than an hour. I don't know if that's something you're tracking. And then what's the contingency plan in the event that there are these huge backups or fuel outages uh, down in that area? So um, I think that there are lines because people are doing the right thing and they're getting um, getting fuel, but there is no shortage of fuel at this time the fuel is still coming in the fuel is still being delivered to our ports and of course we are um, right on hand now in the state as i mentioned in my opening comments we have 415,000 gallons of diesel we have almost 390,000 gallons of gasoline and we have an additional 1.5 million gallons of both diesel and gasoline uh, that are en route to the state of florida and so should that be needed, that fuel will be there. But fuel deliveries are still taking place. Uh, they will continue to take place uh, throughout today. Uh, I, Jared or, uh, or Kevin may correct, but I, I, I think they're planning on doing it tomorrow as well. Uh, and so we have, we have fuel uh, now in certain parts of the state. If you have a lot of people going, you, you, may you may have lines, but that's not because